Hello, brilliant 3D jewelry community. Welcome to this almighty settings asset tutorial number five. Let's get started. Start with an empty Blender file. Go to File, Append. Go to the Asset file. Go to Collections. And today we're going to work in alphabetical order. Good, so here we have the Azure faceted setting types. And remember, when you append a collection, you are going to have all the elements from that collection overlapping at once. You can start hiding what you're not going to use. Today, I'm not going to work with the bezels. And I'm going to start explaining the basket setting so I can hide the others. So as always, we have the profiles for the belt, the profile for the base, and from the top view, we have the profile for the prongs. So if I select the prongs, what I have is a busy curve with the control points making the shape of the prong. So let's say I want a specific size for my gemstone because the client gave me the exact measurements for my gemstone. So it's going to be 10 millimeters. And let's say this Asher now is going to be 5.5 millimeters thick. So I'm going to select the belt and go to front view. Now in edit mode, I need to scale this, but I need to work from the center. So before going to edit mode, we're going to do a shift S cursor to select it to center the 3D cursor. Let's go to edit mode, select everything and work from the 3D cursor. Now I can scale the belt very easily. From the front view, I can keep scaling. I can see with the transparency if I'm touching the gem so I can be very precise and also I can lower it there. So that's to scale it without modifying the thickness. But obviously many designers will want to adapt the shape and size of the belt. So select the profile of the belt, bring it closer, go to edit mode. Let's work from the median point again. So here in edit mode, I can scale scale my belt and also I can readapt its position and that also readjusts the size and position of the belt because the profile and the belt are working together. So maybe here I want to change the angle and here I can have all the precision that I need. Maybe I want to modify the design of the belt, make it double like this. And this is great. Or maybe you want something smoother to that. Change the curve splint type to Bezier and then select the points that you want to smooth. Change them to automatic handle types. And now you can adapt. And now you can adapt a completely different type of design like this, something smoother using the Bezier curve type. Or you want to go to something sharp again. That's the poly type. Now let's select the belt and go to edit mode. The corner has two control points because maybe that part needs to be readjusted. So I can make it bigger, readjust and give a very exact position here to readapt the shape of the corners. That's why we have two control points at the corners. Exit edit mode. Now I'm going to adapt and move the prongs. So let's select the prongs, go to edit mode, select everything, grab, adapt the position. So the position is good, but the size is not. So let's go out of edit mode, select the profile, go to edit mode on the profile, select everything on the profile. And here you can scale the profile, readapt the thickness like this. Now here also, you can change the shape as you want. Maybe I don't want these corners, so I can scale and move. And then I can take these two sides and adapt the shape of my prongs however needed. There, and then scale that here. Exited mode. Let's work with the base. Select the base, do a Shift S, cursor to select it. Go to edit mode, select everything with A, work from the 3D cursor and scale. Maybe you want to be on the inside of the prongs. Now I'm going to select the profile of the base and I'm going to go to edit mode. So here I want my base to be bigger and thicker. So here I can work very precisely the shape of the base. I'm good on the inside. Side. I'm good on the outside. Exit edit mode. Now here a detail on the prongs. There's a stage right here that I don't want. So let's go to edit mode on the prongs. This is because of the radius of each control point. So here what I need to do is readapt the radius of this level. 
this is clean as I wanted. So this is how you scale and customize any prong setting using the almighty settings asset. Now from here, we also need to talk about rendering and 3D printing because the length of the prongs needs to be adapted for rendering or for manufacturing. We all know that. So by example, for manufacturing, many jewelers prefer to have even more metal coming out above the gems. So now the design is clearly for manufacturing. So I'm going to hide the gem, select the belt, the base, and the prongs. I'm going to go to File, Export, STL. Include the selection only, and this is Basket Asher for Prongs Manufacturing. Export STL. At this point, I'm going to go to File and import the STL back in Blender. Now, this is the STL file imported back in Blender. At this point, one very common practice is to add a remesh modifier, adapt the voxel size to the precision that you need. I go at 0 0.02 and I'm going to apply the remeshing. So obviously now we're going to have a lot more geometry. So we're going to use the decimate modifier, check the face count, one million and a half. That's still pretty low for a high resolution 3D jewelry STL printing file but I'm going to go at 25%. So ratio 0.25, that's how it works in Blender. Let it calculate here. Okay, we have 500,000. And here you don't even need to apply the decimate modifier. So you just go to File, Export, STL, and I'm going to overwrite my printing file, Export, STL. Now I can erase this, so delete. Obviously don't erase the rest. These are my curves making this Azure setting. Now, if you want, you can import the STL again. You can see that the size is higher than earlier, but we are totally sure that this is one solid object because of the remesh modifier we've used. And then we lowered the geometry using the decimating modifier. So this is excellent for 3D printing. At this stage, there is another thing many jewelers like to add to their 3D models, the casting channels. So I'm going to add a cylinder. Now in edit mode, I'm going to select the top with the transparency. So we select the entire circle and I'm going to adapt the design here and I'm going to extrude and scale. So I'm going to make a Y casting channel. Here we have this, the structure is centered and I'm going to add a mirror modifier on the X axis. And then very important, I'm going to add a remesh modifier. This one, a very low resolution. So the voxel size is pretty big. Lower voxel sizes make higher resolutions because you make a lot of geometry when you have a small voxel size. Good. So now I can select my casting channel, the setting, and go to File, Export, STL. Now here, I'm going to save another file. You can always import your STL again. So now this is the Azure setting customized to the new size of the gem, ready for manufacturing using this 3D printing STL. And as general knowledge, don't forget to check your STL in another software. So not in Blender. That's a good practice. Check your STL, repair it if necessary. That's general knowledge for 3D printing. Great. Now we're going to talk about the double prongs basket setting. And I'm going to use the cushion shape to customize this double prong setting. So here I'm going to make the gem smaller. I'm going to make it three by four by two, then select the belt, shift S cursor to select it, edit mode, select everything, work from the 3D cursor, scale, start adapting the position, exit edit mode, then the prongs, go to edit mode, I'm going to scale to bring them closer. Then also out of edit mode, select the profile of the double prongs. Go to edit mode. Here I'm going to work from the median point and readapt the scale of the prongs as needed. Here, if you want, you can select one circle, adapt to close or open the double prongs as you require. So select the other circle with L, 
and put the exact same opposite position to keep the symmetry of the double prong. You don't have to, but it's recommended. It's did it mode. Then obviously if you need, go back to the prongs, work from the median point and adapt the rotation. If you have to, this is better. In the edit mode, then select the base, shift S, cursor to select it, edit mode, work from the 3D cursor, scale, adapt the position. Maybe you have to scale only on the Y axis. And obviously here I'm going to work on the profile of the base, this is much too high. Raise the floor, readapt the angle. Now here you can choose if the prongs go outside or on the inside. I like it like that. Then the profile of the belt might need some tweaking. Always check that you're not touching the gem. Readapt these angles. Okay, we're not touching the gem. The distances are really good and I want to readapt these angles. That's really nice. And here we are, the double prong basket setting, customized for a smaller cushion gem. So we can see, once you know the drill, the process is a lot faster and creating settings becomes much easier thanks to the almighty settings asset. Then we have the straight basket settings. I'm going to work with a heart shape. So here we have the profile for the white prongs. In edit mode, you can adapt the shape as you like. Maybe you want this to be shorter. I'm going to delete some vertices. I'm going to subdivide here and then maybe I want it rounder. So I'm going to subdivide each side and readapt the design to my liking. Then we have the V-tip prong. Here the profiles also in edit mode. Maybe I want it to be thicker and have a more customized shape. Now the size. So let's make a four millimeters heart. Let's select the belt. Shift S cursor to select it. Let's go to edit mode. Work from the 3D cursor. Let's scale, adapt the position as needed. Now the prongs. So here in edit mode, we're going to see that this is a curve. So we can adapt the position, but if you want to rotate, you need to work with the tilt. Then if you want to change the size, you can work with the mean radius. So this is slightly different. Now let's go and select the base. Let's bring the 3D cursor. Let's go to edit mode, select everything, work from the 3D cursor. Let's scale this. So now the position, now the position of the tip, let's go to edit mode. This is also a curve. So select everything to keep it straight. This is the straight basket. And you can also work with the mean radius to readapt the thickness and tweak the position as needed. Then we have the profiles of the belt and the base right here. I'm going to work on the shape of the belt. So here I can select the prongs. They're all curved, so you can edit them at the same time. Here I'm going to readapt the height of the prongs. Now, if I want to lower this for rendering, so adapt the design, tweak the design for every specific need that you have. These prongs are for rendering now. This would clearly not be enough metal for manufacturing. This is clearly for rendering. Great. Then we have the double prongs for the same setting. Let's go to edit mode. This is a mesh. So let's work in edit mode like this. Now let's tweak the height. So to tweak the height, here we have a solidify modifier. Work with the modifier and adapt this. This is ready for rendering. Save and be happy. This tutorial was about the basket settings in the almighty asset. You can find it on Superhive Blender Market. The next tutorial for this asset will also be about the baskets, but with 3D jewelry design examples. Take care of the planet, be nice to animals, and see you soon.